After years of waiting, we're finally touching 5 GHz networks. This isn't just a frequency update, it is a completely new standard for portable pen testing. This is actually the upgraded version of the exact unit that I gave to Ryan Montgomery, AKA Zero Day. The flipper, and then this was actually given to me. A friend of mine, another YouTuber, Talking Sasquatch, uh, just comes up to me and hands this to me. Oh shit, but people are on steroids. This is a prototype running dual ESP32C5s. It is an absolutely amazing device. Because today's theme is five gigahertz ethical hacking. I don't just have one device, I don't just have two devices, but I've actually got three devices to show you guys today because Just Call Me Coco also gave me the hookup. I feel like I don't always give Just Call Me Coco and AWOC Dynamics enough love, so today we're gonna take a look at some really, really cool brand new tech that nobody's seen. All right, let's get at it. This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. First of all, I wanna give a huge thanks to both AWOC Dynamics and Just Call Me Coco. They're absolutely amazing. Links to both of their shops down below. All right, so that's enough yapping. Let's switch to the top down and take a look. All right, so let's start off with the actual device that I gave to Zero Day. This is the Dual ESP32 by Just Call Me Coco. This is the Sasquatch edition. Take off the pin cover. And yeah, you can see it's got gold writing on it there. It also has gold hardware. It's very cool. It's got my logo on it. He made me a whole batch of these for DEF CON, and this actually paid for a lot of the expenses. So thank you so much, AWOC Dynamics, for that. It has GPS on board right there with a ceramic little GPS, very cool. And it's got dual ESP32s. Now, if you look really carefully, it's hard to see, but they're both ESP32 rooms. These do both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but it only does 2.4 gigahertz. So if you don't know the reason for having two ESP32s, it's so that this device itself can have its own ESP32, and then our Flipper Zero can have its own. Very, very cool. So let's take a look at the C5. So here is the brand new dual touch C5. It says war driving down there because it's really awesome for war driving. One of the other things that they've added in here and I'll show you is flock war driving, which I absolutely love. We'll touch back with that a little bit later. Snoop onto them. As they snoop onto us. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has the same uranium glass look as my Flipper Zero does. And I don't know if we'll see this on camera, but yeah, check that out. This is a uh, little black light. And yeah, this is super, super, super vibrant in black light. I love this. It's so cool. This is now officially my favorite Flipper Zero, even more than my original one back then that I made the case with PCB way. Very, very cool. So yeah, we can see we have different fonts and it says dual C5. Pop it around the back here, and then we'll see that these are both ESP32 C5s. We've got a little bit of a new logo back there. Even the antenna on here is AWOC Dynamics. This is an absolutely legendary antenna. And you can see down here, not for sale prototype. So no, you can't buy this one from me. Shut up and take my money. It is super, super freaking cool. I absolutely love this. And yeah, what it allows you to do, it runs all of the same stuff up here. But if we load up our Flipper Zero, we can go to apps, go down to GPIO, hop on down to ESP. What's cool about the dual ESP is that the device and the screen can run one firmware and then the Flipper Zero can run a completely different firmware like the Flipper HTTP. It's very, very cool. I'm not sure if all of the firmwares are up to date with current C5. So for now, let's just use normal Marauder. So now that I have given myself permission to test all of my own devices within my controlled test environment, let's give an AP scan and see what comes up. Because remember, we're ethical hackers. We only test our own equipment inside our own test environment to make sure we're being as safe and responsible as possible and conforming with any local laws. So I absolutely love this device. It's so cool. And I mean, look, it, it just, it just looks I'm not gonna say ridiculous I'm gonna say ridiculously awesome so instead of showing you how this device works with the one that's hooked up to the flipper zero let me show you how it works with this other brand new device because it'll be a little bit easier for y'all to see he's in the system talking Sasquatch knows hack the planet are you watching yes. subscribe before it's too late talking Sasquatch just go ahead and put this guy down right there because again it is absolutely gorgeous and here we have a brand new device that literally nobody has seen hello this is the esp32 marauder c5 so if we click this on right here it's got its own little enclosure it's just the esp32 marauder by just call me coco which is super cool but this one has some more features very very cool 
All right, so I just kicked the brightness down a bunch so you can see. But yeah, this is ESP32 Marauder. If you've never seen it before, we'll run through some of the features because it's an absolute legendary device that pretty much all of the other ESP32 Wi-Fi testing devices are kind of trying to emulate. Basically, the screen is broken up into three sections, top, middle, bottom. Middle is like the select button, and then it's just kind of up, up and down with these. So up, down. So if we hop into GPS right now, you can see in the upper corner right there, I don't have any GPS connections because I am again in my test environment, which is very, very secluded so that almost nobody is anywhere near me. So that's what we're in here for, but you can read the pure GPS data. There is a uh, data streams. You can use it as a tracker and it can show off GPS points of interest. Very, very, very cool. Let's go back. So one of the things we'll check out here is Wi-Fi because this is what makes this device so amazing. So I'll go through some sniffers. Sniffers are super cool. Plus I've got a ton of stuff in this test environment that we can sniff. So if we go to just normal sniffers, you can see we have so many options. Probe request, beacon sniff, you can sniff deauth. I love the idea that you can do a deauthentication sniff. If you were ever concerned about somebody trying to attack your network, a deauthentication sniff would test to see if they're sending you deauthentication packets. Then you can keep yourself safe and harden your system. That's why we teach ethical hacking, so you understand what a bad actor could potentially do to your system and make it safer. So let's go ahead and take a look at some more features. Packet count, which will just count how many packets are floating around. Packet monitor. Here we have our custom channel analyzer so we can see how many devices are on each channel and it allows us to clean up our network and keep things a little bit more organized and not interfering with each other and here's the really fun stuff down here so we can scan and detect for Ponegachis, which I don't have one running right now but here's a pineapple there is a Wi-Fi pineapple right here let's see if we can find them detect pineapple nope oh I'm actually not doing anything let me run a recon on my Wi-Fi pineapple and let's see if it pops up now nope Okay, that's weird. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It's probably a user error. No problem there. Cut screen to exit. All right, so let's do a demo that I'm positive is going to work. Let's sniff for flipper zeros. I know I got a ton of those around. Shabang. And then just like that, it's finding my flippers. It says a white flipper. We have a transparent flipper. And where's my other one? Oh, shoot. That one's off. Don't worry about the other one. Now, this feature I love every single time I find a device that has it the detect card skimmer option. So you know the card skimmers that criminals are putting in gas stations and things like that to try to get people's credit card information? Well, this detects those, so you can keep yourself safe. Honestly, it's an absolutely necessary feature to have this day and age. You can go ahead and flock sniff, but you can also flock war drive. I love this idea. So what this does is while you're driving around, you can find those flock cameras that are tracking literally everybody and it geotags them with a location so they can be put on a map. So people can at least be aware of where these cameras are because they are literally tracking you absolutely everywhere. Let's go back here again. There's just so much stuff on here. We're going to stick to the defensive capabilities of this device because again, that's the whole point here. So if we go into something like Wi-Fi scanners, we can check our own network to see if there's any security holes. One of the times that I hooked up to this, I realized I had an open SSH port and obviously you don't want that to happen. So being able to go through and test your own network with devices like this, absolutely indispensable. If you haven't seen, I have a full video on how to use Wi-Fi Marauder, although I think I'm going to have to update this because Just Call Me Coco has added so much functionality to this device. It's absolutely crazy. So for our next device, we're actually going to be taking a look at this. This is a standalone war driver. It uses the same ESP32 dev kit that this one does. So we're actually going to have to take this apart and reflash this in order for us to be able to use it. So let's cut to the taking it apart montage, but not before this super quick segue to today's sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all things PCB design, manufacturing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and so much more. And when it comes to 3D printing, they have so many options. You can 3D print in resin, nylon, PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, PC, ASA, Peaks, aluminum, stainless steel, titanium, tool steel. It's absolutely incredible the things that PCBWay can do. So no matter what your project, PCBWay has engineers on staff to make sure that your design becomes a reality as easily and quickly as possible. Thank you so much to PCBWay for your continued support. You guys are absolute legends. All right, let's get back at it. Oops, you guys can use some more exposure at this point.
So here is the baseboard here. I still have the peel on there. Oh, you know what? I'll give you guys the peel. I normally leave these on, but here we go. Ooh, that's satisfying. Just for you guys. So now we can take our little switch off of here. Actually, it'll just come right out when I flip this over. Here we go. And here's the back. So we can get a little lay of the land here. We've got ourselves a little tiny GPS antenna. We can definitely mod the case to add a full-size antenna. We have our ESP32 C5 dev kit with our two fun little USB Cs. And there's actually a NeoPixel on there that has multicolor. Very, very cool. And I actually love this. This is, uses an off-the-shelf 18650 battery. So if you got one of those kicking around, perfect. So we're going to pop this off, give it a little wiggle, and then throw this over here. And we're gonna program this by itself before we plug it into our new device. So let's go ahead and pop into picture in picture mode so we can see what's going on. All right, cool. So since we have our little ESP32C5 chilling right here, we, if we hop over down to the desktop, we can see we've got a Pi Flasher that they sent me over. Cool, so we'll open up our Pi Flasher. We're gonna hold shift, right click. We're gonna PowerShell window here, move this over. And all we're going to do is Python, and then it's going to be the launcher, which is C5. If I press tab right here, it'll actually format it for me. Perfect. Press enter. And then, bam, it says waiting for ESP32 C5 device to be connected. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take our cable right here. We're going to plug it into the UART, not the USB right there. So it's this guy. And if, with any luck, it's going to say, uh, yep, ready to flash files. We're going to click yes, enter. And yeah, it's just going, you know, installing stuff, doing what it do. Be a little bit patient and it will get done in no time. It'll install all of the correct files for our war driver. One eternity later. And we are all set. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And one thing we are going to do is we're actually going to remove this jumper because we don't need the jumper when we're plugged into the war driver. Eh, careful. Get out of there. Ugh, there we go. Now we're off. Now let's take apart the war driver. You go there. Now the war driver and the Marauder have almost the exact same shell and the PCB. It's just missing some buttons and has a different screen. All right, take the top off here, set that there. And ah, oh, what the heck, I'll give you one more peel for today because I love you guys. Doo, 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 doo. Cool, two peels one day, one cup. And here we go. So again, it looks pretty much the same as the other device. Very simple, very easy. We're gonna take our ESP32C5, plug that in so that it plugs into that interior row with the USB on the outside, just as it says right there, USB with an arrow. Plug that in there. That should be pretty much good to go. So we'll plop this back in here. We do wanna to remember to put the switch in. The switch goes right over here. You can't really see because my fat thumbs are in the way. Cool. It's ever so slightly awkward because the GPS needs to sit in that little slot right there carefully and then with any luck this will line up eh. see it wants to be a little buggy over there hold on a second there it is bum, bum, bum. cool and then we can put our front piece on making sure everything lines up and screw it back together oh now one thing is actually kind of neat i don't know if you noticed on here but see that ring right there i'm pretty sure that these are mag safe let's uh this guy this guy's got magnet on it, right? I'm pretty sure. And is it? Is this magnetic? Okay, yeah. No, it's definitely magnetic. I bet you this fits on a MagSafe charger or a mag... Not a MagSafe charger. I bet this fits on like a MagSafe mount for your car. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but let's fire this sucker up. And with any luck, do to do we have the right logo. Perfect. So I flashed the right thing on here. And basically, yeah, it just counts down and it starts war driving. So the way this is set up is you go to the uh, access point here. Let's see if I can focus on this. It's kind of hard to see the teeny tiny screen on here, but you just go to the IP address. It's 192.168.4.1 after connecting to the C5 war driver access point. And then you can set up your wiggle identification. You can set up the access point that you want this device to pair to when it gets home. So you can just basically, again, do five gigahertz war driving. Super freaking cool, guys. And here we go. It's in status standby because I do not have any uh, satellites right now. And my battery's at 2%. Hold on a second. Crap, this guy's dying. Don't die on me now. Day. Oh, cool, we're alive. 
So yeah, just like that, we have a working 2.4 and 5 gigahertz war driving setup. Very, very cool, brand new, never seen before. Just Call Me Coco definitely outdid himself with these C5 devices and expect to see them in his store. Uh, just a quick heads up, Just Call Me Coco does update his store on the 1st and 15th of every month. So if he's sold out, that's when you want to go and check it out because he does restock every month. You just got to keep up on him. All right, so that's not one, not two, but three brand new devices all rocking ESP32 C5s care of AWOC Dynamics and Just Call Me Coco. That also means it is the perfect time to harden your own network because you can't just rely on the fact that oh nobody can do anything to my 5 gigahertz devices anymore because guess what? Now they can. And that's why I make educational videos just like this one because knowledge is power. And in this case, it's the power to keep you safe from potentially bad actors infiltrating your Wi-Fi networks. All right, thank you so much for watching. Are there any other devices you want me to test? Leave a comment down below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.